looking at a 1972 4.5 liter Mercedes V8 engine with overhead camshafts. This engine first appeared as a 3.5 liter in 1969. From the time it was introduced right up to 1991, it was basically the same engine. went through a few design changes and a few displacement changes. But there was one very important change that occurred right around 1976. It depends on when the car was manufactured. But the early engines had mechanical adjustable lifters for the valves. So you had to set the clearances. Every 12 to 15,000 miles, you needed to take the valve covers off and adjust the valves. When they came out with the CIS injection in 76, they went to hydraulic lifters. And we still get a lot of confusion. Just last week, I got an email. A guy had a 1984-50 SL, and he wanted to know how to adjust the valves. Well, they're not adjustable because they're self-adjusting hydraulic lifters. In these early V8s, so 3.5 and 4.5 V8s, you do have to adjust the clearances on these lifters, and it can be a real pain. Let me explain why. So let's say you get one of the early Mercedes with this engine, maybe a 450SL, or like this came out of a 280SC 4.5, and you read up on doing a valve adjustment. You think, man, that's pretty easy. You know, they're telling me in the book that I have to go through a certain procedure. You know, I want to get the cam. Usually you get the camshaft low pointing up. This one's off the side a little bit, for, but for the illustration here, it's fine. And you find out, well, the first thing you have to do is you have to remove this clip. You go ahead and you remove the clip. Okay. Then you get your feeler gauge and of course you find the proper clearance and you determine whether or not it's an intake or an exhaust. This particular is an exhaust valve so you find out what the clearance should be. You put the feeler gauge in there. It's a little loose so you need to tighten this up and it says get the wrench. There's a, you know a wrench available, special wrench that you get on this ball socket adjuster. There's only one nut you have to turn. It's not like the diesels where you have to hold one nut and turn the other one. So you get your wrench, a 17 millimeter special wrench, and you start to try to turn this. And you start torquing on this and it doesn't move. Finally, the wrench rounds itself out. This is the type of wrench that was available for years. You know, it's kind of a monkey motion crow's foot that goes on here. And you start torquing on it and it's so tight that it just spins out. And a lot of people complain, they say, well, I got this wrench and it just rounded the nut off and it's not moving. How am I going to adjust this? Well, almost all these wrenches were loose. Look at that. Look at the amount of slop on that. And that's typical every one I've seen. So what happens over time is these ball socket adjusters, they just get locked into place from age and heat. You've got to break them loose. You've got to loosen them up before you can make the fine adjustment. And in the past, what we did was tell people, okay, you're going to have to remove the rocker arm. If you get the rocker arm off, then you can get a six-pointed socket on the ball adjuster. And you can go back and forth, back and forth, kind of get it loosened up. Then you can put the rocker back on. And then this type of wrench even though it fits on there loosely you're going to be able to move it either in or out to get the proper adjustment with the feeler gauge back here and so enter our custom valve spring compressor uh, we're going to compress the valve spring and get that rocker arm out of there okay okay the rocker arm's out Then I can take a 17 millimeter six point socket and get on this ball adjuster like this. And when it's real tight, you're going to really have to torque on it to get it to move. And once it gets moving, you want to move it back and forth, kind of keep it in the same position it was. Maybe move it back and forth three or four times and you'll feel it start to loosen up to where it's not taking 70 to 80 foot pounds of torque more like 40. All right now once it's moving like this Then we're going to compress the spring and slide this straight in like this Okay 
And when you're done, there should be just a little bit of play. If you don't have any play here, and the, <laughs> and the lobe is up, it means you're way out of adjustment. Or if there's a lot of slop, you got to check and make sure you didn't pop that keeper out on top of the valve spring. Now let's take that original wrench, which was typical of the wrenches available for years, and watch this now. See, I can move it. So once you've got the ball socket adjuster to move, having a real tight fitting crow's foot is not that critical. So you can, you know, put this in here, uh, get the uh, feeler gauge in position and tighten and loosen this till you get a little bit of drag on the feeler gauge and you've got your adjustment. I'm not going to go through all the specific details on the adjustment of these valves. There's plenty of information available in the manuals and on the internet. I'm just going to deal with the problems. Well, recently, I've gotten two or three emails, Kent, there's no tools available to get on there to adjust those valves anymore. And you can't do it with a straight, you know, you try to go in there with a straight crow's foot and uh, just a straight extension, it's just going to just slip right off because you're torquing to the side. That doesn't work. So I got Jerson and I said, hey, let's go to work and get a tool. <laughs> that will work. This is what we came up with right here. See that? We had to do a special bend on an impact extension. Then we had to get a very thick, heavy duty crow's foot that would not spread under heavy torque. And then we had to weld it so it's a very tight fit. Look at this. See how tight that is? No slop. In fact, if your edges are rounded out a little bit on your adjusters, you may have to take a hammer, kind of tap it on like that. Our hope was we could do this tool so you would not have to remove the rocker. Now I'm going to say right here, I'm going to have a disclaimer on my website that if you try to use more than 80 foot-pounds of torque on this particular crow's foot, there's no warranty. It is possible. I mean, I don't care what the crow's foot is made out of. If you overstress those jaws, you're going to loosen them up. But most of the time, you can get these loose with around 80 foot-pounds or less. Let's see what this one does right now. I'm going to hold the wrench kind of straight out, and then I'm going to hold on to this bar that we put on the extension and hold it tight in to the camshaft. See what I'm doing there? All right, let's see if we can get it to break. Okay, I got it. Look at that. Then I can reverse. Hold it in tight. Man, that's tight. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. Once you get it to move a couple times, like that, I'd say three or four, back and forth. Okay, now I can pop the clip off and get the feeler gauge in there and do the adjustment. And I did not have to remove the rocker arm. Now we're going to go into production on this special tool. And for those of you out there that have these early 3.5 and 4.5 V8s, don't neglect adjusting your valves because it will affect the performance of your engine.